One of the most influential teachers I've had in my life is Roger Shepard. I was a new graduate student at Stanford in 1979, and that year he was on sabbatical, but, he, but I was there to study with him, and he arrived back in 1980, and I didn't know him, but I knew of his work. He was a very influential theoretician and researcher in cognitive psychology, which was my field of study in graduate school. And he arrived, and I discovered that he was a very, very shy man. And while he, I'm sure he was eager to be my advisor, he was too shy to initiate a conversation with me. I went to his office and introduced myself, and he was very warm back towards me, but I could see he was very shy. After that, whenever he wanted to talk to me, he would walk by my office a few times, and I learned that meant he wanted to talk to me. One time, his wife called me and said, Jennifer, Roger wants to talk to you. He was that shy. But over the years, I grew quite close to Roger, and he was an amazing mentor. At the time, I was in a field that was extremely male-dominated. At Stanford, there were no women professors in my field. In fact, in the whole psychology department, there was only one woman professor. And most of the graduate students had been men, but women were starting to come. And we were not treated all that well, but the exception was Roger Shepard. He was so respectful of me. And I had a lot of ideas about research and psychology that were new and different. And in, unlike most mentors, he didn't try to stifle my creativity at all. In fact, he would say sometimes to me, if I had an idea for a study, he'd say, well, he spoke slowly, I don't think that's going to work, but you should try it. And then if it did work, he'd celebrate along with me. I think the thing I learned from Roger more than anything else was to be true to my intellectual passions and gentle and respectful of other people.